okay okay guys welcome back to my channel so today I am going to be sharing with you about obedience okay okay so when we live when we're living life like a life of faith faith in Jesus Christ the slain lamb that was shed on the cross uh, the, the slain lamb's blood that was shed on the cross for our sin whether you want to believe it or not yes me my job is not to convince people that Jesus is the way the truth and the life no man comes to him except the father that convicts their heart mm -hmm, so that they can know him like that's not my work the work the, the conviction does not come i'm not going to force people to to believe what i believe in it is through the spirit of jesus christ the blood that was shed on calvary's cross that you are going to know who he is and my job is just to share the word with you share the word share the word so that you can hear it because that's how faith comes faith comes by hearing hearing the word of the lord read romans and ephesians it tells you about faith and all of that especially romans so my job is not to convince anybody to con convict them to to tell them that oh you are walking in the walk the way of sin and you need to no that's not my job my job is not to condemn anybody my job is to preach the good news and to not even preach per se to share the good news so that other people can hear about it and then the spirit of truth now which comes through the holy spirit from god himself yes it will convict you okay and when you receive your conviction you will know okay yes so my job is not to convince anybody you can continue to live whatever life you want to live without feeling condemned but when you hear the word of god you will be convicted because his spirit will come upon you or it will give you this feeling of wanting to know who he is okay good but anyway now that you have received jesus as a personal savior you have to walk in faith how are you going to walk in faith you have to obey his word how are you going to ob obey his word if you can't identify his voice here's what i'm going to share with you now okay so usually when god comes to his people in various ways he comes to you in various ways okay so he might come to me in a voice jody and talk to me the, the same way you know whatever whichever way i'm comfortable with people talking to me he will come to me that, that in that same way he might come to you in your own voice you might hear your voice in your head and you might think that oh this is not this is not this is me talking this is not god okay that's how god comes he comes and he does not come shouting he doesn't scream his voice he or he what you hear from god is usually a soft voice that voice is usually the voice that says oh don't go there stay right here but then you hear something else go 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 over there go over there over there go over there because if you don't go over there and you always hear a voice trying to have a conversations and they're trying to tell you if you don't go there you are going to you're going to miss something if you don't take that opportunity you're going to miss it and then you're not going to get enough money and god god doesn't come in that way he's always the soft quiet voice so you have to really listen and then he speaks to your conscience when you hear the voice it's just so quiet and soft and it's just always coming back and then your heart is your heart is usually um at war with the voice with the soft voice and the, the the next voice that is just convincing you trying to convince you trying to convince you yeah th that's how that's how it goes on within you like a warfare literal warfare like the enemy and his angels and his principalities powers rules of darkness of, of this earth they don't want you to walk according to the purpose and to the will of God okay so you have to like listen listen to the voices if you hear voices in your head listen to them listen to them okay and I'm not telling you to listen to 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 be like oh 
am I going to hear a voice? No, I'm not telling you to do that. But listen to the voices that you hear in your head. Okay? Because I t I'm telling you, one of them is usually very calm, very stern, and it's always like th that voice, it sounds like a mother's voice. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a mother's voice versus a friend's voice. Okay, your friends always say, "Come, let us go here." And and your mother says, she, "She's too strict." And but your mother's voice is like, "Jody, don't go there. Please, to make sure that you stay home. Do not go over your friend's house. Do not go to that party." That's how your mom's voice is always. It's almost like. Your mom's voice is almost like God's voice. Always calm. So I'm not talking about the crazy moms that like, Girl, if you don't, how how that? And like, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the moms that, yeah, nice, calm, quiet. Please do not go there. If you go there, da 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 da. That is usually the voice of God. So you have to listen, listen, and you will know the voice of God because your heart is usual. You are usually convicted when you hear the voice literally it, it it plays over in your heart you feel a certain way and you're like mm, mm, should i do this i don't think i should do this but then a voice is like you should do it you should do it and they tell you all the consequences and if you do this and you can get this and what blah, 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 blah. listen to the voice okay anyway listen to that voice so obedience no you might be wondering what is it to obey God? What is it to obey God? I'm going to bring back, there are many uh, instances like I could share with you. I could share with you from the beginning when God placed man here on earth in all his, his glory, mankind in all his glory. When God placed you, us on earth, he gave us wisdom, he gave us knowledge, he gave us understanding, he gave us free will, he gave us power okay but earth has forces it had forces from before the it, it began you know what i'm saying remember he said that the earth was without form or void darkness was up upon the face of the deep and then he spoke light okay so god didn't put us here on earth like robots and oh you should move this way and you should move this way he put here Put us here on earth to dominate and he gave us a, a, the, 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 the ability to choose mm -hmm. and the garden is very very symbolic it's a beautiful place a garden is a very beautiful place okay and fruits the fruits of a garden the fruits of a garden of the garden are actually good usually okay but there are various trees if you notice he used trees in the bible to talk about the garden that he placed us here on earth my personal belief is the garden when we hear it in genesis it wasn't a literal garden it was a figure it because god is god is a god he uses a lot of things they're very symbolic whatever god uses is in this in the word if, when you read the bible you recognize that it is everything is usually very symbolic like numbers are very symbolic events are very symbolic like they everything everything in the word is in symbolic so he uses different things for as a symbol to show us so we can have a vivid understanding of what he's talking about okay we are flesh and we are not going to understand the things of the flesh unless he uses things that are of nature things that we understand things that we are used to okay so me personal in my person my personal view my personal view i believe that the garden was not necessarily a physical place the garden that we read about is very symbolic and it represents the garden represents a place glory it represents god's power it represents his glory and then the fruits now in the garden from the various trees oh those are the, the the fruits were the result were the result of the consequences the fruits were the consequences of our choice 
okay yes so for example if we choose so he said that there are two trees in this garden one is a tree of life one you should not take any fruit from that tree because it is it leads to destruction okay so i believe that when god placed us here on earth in the garden it means that he placed us here in glory and he gave us free will he gave us a choice when he created us okay and the fruit are very symbolic that's what my personal belief okay my personal belief okay and the fruits in the garden were choices free will okay and he gave us the choice i'm not going to make you as a puppet i'm going to make you in my own image okay he knows what it is to eat of the fruit of life he knows because he's god he's eternal so he knows what it is to eat from the fruit of the tree of life so i personally believe that he put the fruit and he and we understand the fruit or the tree in the garden I believe that it is very symbolic and he placed the fruits uh, and he gave us the idea of fruits so that we can know the consequences of our action if we choose the tree of life we will have life eternal if we choose from the tree that gives us that the enemy told us that would give us um, everlasting life life and we can rule and dominate that's what the devil told um, Eve, mm -hmm, which was a lie. If we choose from whichever tree, there would be results. Okay? If we eat from whichever tree that we wanted, there would be result. But he told us to eat from the tree of life. Because the tree of life gives us life forevermore. Okay? We got deceived and we ate from the tree. And I also believe that it is not a physical fruit that she ate it is symbolic it is because they chose they chose it could be physical it could be physical they could have actually they could have actually eaten a fruit but i believe it is very symbolic i receive it as very symbolic okay so god gives us choice a choice one we can choose to love him or we can choose to love ourselves mm -hmm. just look at it we can choose to love him or we can choose to love ourselves when we choose to love him and are obedient to him then we will have eternal life if we choose to love ourselves and believe that believe that we were created from ourselves then we will die okay and that i believe was the beginning of disobedience we fell because we didn't listen to god okay and that is the result of eating from the tree that didn't guarantee us life but it is the forbidden tree what god told us not to eat from okay and today god is speaking to us as human beings he's telling us he has provided a way for us to receive him okay remember moses and the children of israel they received the ark of the covenant and the ark of the covenant represented purification it represented the power of god a physical thing they had walking around with it nobody could go into the the ark or the temple nobody could go in there they had to be holy that was that just to show how holy the god that created us is he's very holy and he provided a physical physical um thing that they could actually sacrifice blood so that they could be free from sin because the the the, the sacrificing of blood is life okay and you have to sacrifice blood to cleanse us to purge us from our sins okay so on the day of atonement the the the, the priest aaron moses they would have to sacrifice a lamb so that the people could be free they could be free from their sin and then god could receive them god could speak to them god's power was present okay that was the first covenant with them in order to Free them from sin. Free them from any sin, whether voluntary, involuntary sin. Free them from that so that God's presence could dwell with them. 
okay that's because god is a holy god and he's a god of obedience okay and he said also in the, in the word that disobedience is like witchcraft so it's wickedness in high places like well, disobedience is weak disobedience can cause us to be destroyed can cause us our lives and you can imagine that even with our parents when we disobey or if our parents say don't do this jody don't go there jody it can literally cause us our lives we can break a bone we can break an arm because of not being obedient and that's the same thing with god disobedience is like witchcraft okay and that is the reason why i'm telling you now the people of israel they had to get have uh, the ark of the covenant because that represented the power of god and the power of god could only dwell with holiness and this is the reason why they had to sacrifice the lamb because the lamb represents life okay and to get atonement free freedom from sin we had to they had to do that you know what i'm saying but now god has provided a better way because he knows that the flesh the flesh us in our literal flesh human beings our natural state or fallen state we can not even our fallen state just mankind in general we cannot please god it is difficult for us to please god in our in ourselves in our flesh he gave us laws we could not follow the laws even with jesus even with god's present in back then in moses or in yeah in moses's days with the people of israel they could not obey they saw the power of god even when we see the power of god we will still disobey god you know what i'm saying we will still disobey god following the laws God, God giving the Moses the, the, are the people of Israel the laws do not serve any other gods when they felt like oh God God is not near us where, where is God where is he where they, they started to worship idols what's the point of worshiping idols because as human beings we cannot please God by following laws we cannot please God and everything that happened in the ancient days up to today is God's way of allowing us as human being the human race to understand how we how we um how, what our nature is like what our sinful nature is like so everything that was accounted for everything that was recorded that we know today is for knowledge wisdom and for us to become mature mankind for mankind to be mature but then the days of moses mankind they weren't as mature as today okay now we have the experience of we know the story of moses we know what happened to many of the prophets many of the people back then because of disobedience we know what happened to them so today we can be reconciled and how are we reconciled god did away with the ark of the covenant he did away with the law and the law now is to love and to obey how do we love god we love god by obeying his word and jesus christ now is the blood is the sacrifice of blood okay so whenever we are sinful whenever we are disobedient jesus christ is our way all we need to do is surrender all we need to do is to look into ourselves look deep into our hearts and come before god and tell him how much we are we are sorry for sinning against him for being disobedient you know what i'm saying yes and i know this is a mouthful i might have a little another video that talks about the covenants the covenant the covenant the versus today jesus christ and what he represents and why jesus christ had to come to mankind in order for us to be restored unto our maker i'm going to have a separate video for that but today's video is disobedience okay so yes disobedience is was from the beginning from the creation of man we have been disobeying god okay how can we how can we be more obedient how can we be more obedient god has been teaching me personally because while on my my journey to just like because I've, I've been saved since i was eight years old 
while on my journey to understanding and knowing God more, something happened to me. I, 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 I have been praying in the mornings, I've been reading my Bible, I've been reading the Word, I've been studying and so forth. And I've been writing, recording my experiences and so forth because I have to write everything so that it can encourage me. So I was doing all of that and I remembered one day I didn't get to do it because I woke up late and I had to go about my business. And I didn't get to do anything but so I just did a quick prayer. It wasn't even prayer, I was just talking. So I remembered I felt so bad. I felt so bad in myself that I didn't pray. And it, I repeated the same thing the next morning because I went to my bed late. I repeated the same thing and I just felt so condemned. I'm like, I am like, I am like the people of Israel. I am like the people that disobeyed God. So I was saying to myself, I am literally everything that God condemned in the days of Moses. I am literally everything that he doesn't want. And I felt so condemned. And because I felt so condemned, because I was literally disobedient, I felt so condemned because that is how this, what disobedience does to us. It makes us feel condemned. Because mm -hmm. we know that we did something or we didn't, we didn't respond the way that we should have or we didn't listen to the voice when the voice spoke to us. We did whatever we wanted to do. And I felt so frustrated because I repeated the same thing over and over again. And I felt so condemned and the voices in my head were like, you're just like the people of Israel. They're always disobeying. Are you even capable of obeying God? Are you capable of obeying God? And I was sitting like, maybe mankind, we are not capable of obeying God. And I was sitting there and I just felt so condemned. And I'm like thinking, Moses got the Moses and the people of Israel, they saw God's presence. They knew who God was and they still disobeyed him. They saw his power. They saw how he... You could, you know, he allowed Moses and his rod to cross the Red Sea and the people, Pharaoh and the army, they were, you know, cast in the waters. They were destroyed by the waters. And I'm like, people knew what God is. I know who God is and I constantly disobey God. I am just like the people of Israel. And I was saying to myself, am I even capable of obeying God? Can I really obey God? And I was just saying that to myself. And then I realized, for, because when, when that happened to me, like two days later, because I felt so condemned, two days later, I'm like, I'm not even going to pray because maybe God is not even, maybe God doesn't even see me. Cause look what, look what he did with the people of Israel when they disobeyed him. They didn't make it in the promised land. I'm like, if I'm constantly disobeying God, I can't please God. And I was just there and I felt so condemned because I'm so disobedient and like, man, maybe mankind, we're not capable of disobeying. Why God wants us to obey him? And I was just there talking to myself and that was two days and I got over it because I remembered, I just, I didn't even read the scripture. I didn't even understand what it meant, but I remembered this scripture, this, um, this verse, it said, God, Jesus Christ did not come into this world to condemn the world, but he came so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And I heard this voice in my head and it was like, Jody, I am not the one that is condemning you of your sin because the, the days are over. Those days are over. I've given you an easier way that you can be forgiven of your sin without feeling condemned and he also said to me i did not come in the, into this world so that you can you might feel condemned so any condemnation is from satan it's from the devil so I, I it's like i got a wake up call and i'm like wow so god is not condemning it's the devil that is condemning me making me feel like oh you're disobedient and God is not going to hear from you because he doesn't hear from disobedience. Yes, guys, so I was just there condemning myself because I thought, you know, it was the other way. And God spoke to me and he was like, no, Jody, I did not come into this world to condemn mankind. I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And then he spoke to me and he said that, um, Jody, 
I know mankind. You're not the first person to, dis to disobey me. You're not the first and you won't be the last. Okay? You're not the first and you won't be the last to disobey me. From the very beginning, mankind disobeyed God. We have been disobedient. And even when he came, when his presence came on earth, came to the people of Israel and he showed them his glory and he showed them everything about him. They still disobeyed God. So he's like, Jody, you're not the first and the last. Okay? And he said to me that the, the ark of the covenant and the laws, the laws condemned us whenever we sinned. The laws condemned us whenever we sinned. And he was just showing me the story of um, Moses and when he gave them the law. And he says, the law condemned us whenever we sinned. Whenever we didn't, um, whenever we didn't, um, we weren't obedient to God, the laws condemned us. Yes, he said the law condemned us. But everything was for us to become mature, for us to understand who God is. Because if God just come... If, 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 for example, if, 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 for ex a lot of people like, a lot of skeptic, they're like, oh, I don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe in God. I'm not a religious person. I don't believe in religion and whatever, whatever. I wouldn't consider myself religious per se. I am a follower of Christ. I believe in God. I believe in the Alpha, the Omega. I believe that Jesus came, came, Jesus Christ came on earth to redeem me from my sin. I believe in God, the one true, all-powerful, all-knowing God. I believe in that God. A lot of people, they're like, I'm not of faith. Like, God himself have to come down from heaven and show me himself. Like, a lot of us, we believe that we want to see God show himself. Why would you want God to show himself? If God is this all-powerful being, why would you want you in your flesh for this deity to show you himself so that it's to, to prove that he is real hmm? why do you think that do you think that we would have the capabilities the capabilities to even fathom this amazing deity the one that created the earth the heavens the heavens and the earth do you think that we have the power to even fathom? Would you want to see the sun? God created the sun. Just imagine when we are outside during the su during summer and the sun is shining bright as ever. And that sun is so hot that we hide from it. Do you really want to see the God that created us? We don't even know what we are asking for. Mm -hmm. We don't even know what we're asking for. And even so, I am come, it, it came back to me that God showed himself to the people of Israel. He showed himself in the form of an ark. He was present in the ark. The ark represented his power. And even though we saw the power, we still rejected God. They still disobeyed God. That's just to show how wicked we our nature is how how we are as human beings you know what i'm saying but anyway he was he was speaking to me and he showed me that look at them he jesus christ didn't come in the world to condemn sin to, to condemn us but he came to redeem us and i was like after that after the two days of my little you know shake it up and down i'm like thinking oh i feel condemned and rejected after that up and down i sat down and i heard the voice showing me and he showed me some scriptures and so forth he didn't come here to condemn us and so forth and then i just felt revived and i said like yes god thank you lord you didn't come to condemn us yeah i am not condemned jesus christ didn't come to condemn me okay of my sin he didn't come to condemn me he came to that i might have life and have it more abundantly so i believed in that and i was going good i started reading and listening and everything and uh, something happened i was i remember god woke me up at four o'clock approximately four o'clock and i heard jody and i got up and i woke up and immediately i'm like like four o'clock on the dot god woke me up and when i got up i heard jody get up and pray 
and just do and I just got up and I was just so obedient and I'm like whoa what was that and when I finished pray I went back to sleep pray and everything I went back to sleep and then I got ready to go to school and I'm like whoa this morning was so weird <laughs> I'm like I just heard a voice get up pray and I just did it I'm like oh wow okay and I felt really good in myself that I listened to that voice and I felt like accomplished I'm like yes God I did it I obeyed you for once in my life <laughs> and then the next day I know it's just the, the enemy trying to discourage me the next day now God woke me up the same time four o'clock and I was in the bed just lurking I took the phone was checking I'm like I obeyed God yesterday so the obedience for yesterday can make up for today that's how I felt. I don't even know where I, that, that came from. The obedience from yesterday can make up for today. I'm like, oh, I obeyed God today, yesterday. So the obedience from yesterday can work for today. And I was laying in the bed. I'm like, you can check, 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 check YouTube. Go on YouTube, go check, check something. Listen to, listen to a, a Bible verse or whatever. Or just relax a little bit and wait until 5.30. And I relaxed until 5.30 until it was maybe 6 o'clock. And then 6 o'clock, I said, you know what? Since you never, since you didn't get, you, you didn't get up at four o'clock, just wake up at seven and then do the prayer for 30 minutes. And that's how it was in my head. And when 7.30 came, I got up and I sat down and I was listening and I heard the voice just say, Jody, it's not even a voice. It wasn't so like it, it, it was clear, but it wasn't. It wasn't at the front of my my um what do you say now? it wasn't in my conscious the conscious man right away it was like in the unconscious a little bit so i heard the voice i heard something but i just kind of push it back into the unconscious because i didn't want to i didn't want to hear it at the time until i don't even remember when i woke up again god woke me up at four o'clock again i was sleeping on my, my couch he woke me by four o'clock and i woke up at four o'clock and i got up and i did everything apart from praying and i'm like why is it that i am doing everything apart from praying and i was struggling and i felt sleepy and i just felt tired i'm like what is this and then at 7 30 around seven I don't remember six seven or seven thirty but later on I was like well just do everything that I needed to do all right you know what I'm going to pray even though I feel defeated I'm going to pray because if I don't pray I I, I will feel um I will feel defeated if I don't pray but if I pray I think I'll feel a little bit better so I'm like, even though I didn't wake up the time, I didn't pray the when, when God wanted me to pray, but I'm going to pray now. Because if I don't pray, I'm, I don't want to feel that condemned way. I don't want to feel condemned. So while I was there, I was like, mm. God said there's no condemnation. No condemnation. No condemnation. So I'm like, well, even if I, di even if I disobey God, and I didn't wake up four o'clock no condemnation he didn't come to condemn me he didn't come come to condemn me and all of that and that's what I was saying to myself and I started praying guys you don't know what happened to me while I was praying God literally showed me a something that I read I read it but it wasn't I didn't get I, it, it wasn't strong in me like I read the scriptures about Samuel and Saul and Jonathan and everything but it wasn't solid in me I just read it and I knew about it and then something happened and then like the Spirit of God literally started speaking to me and he's like he's like read um, Samuel and I started listening to Samuel just listening to the story of um, Samuel and what happened and how Saul was appointed he got appointed as king God gave him um, the kingdom and I was looking at the situation and I was listening to it while I was thinking and I was just reading 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 a story about Saul 
and Samuel and what happened and the story was the Amalekite the, the Amalekites they were the ones that literally they they literally harm or hurt the Israelites you know the Israelites are God's chosen people they literally hurt the Israelites they did a lot of harm to the Israelites they were dangerous they were wicked to the Israelites but you see God he is that's the reason why he said I am he's like he said um that he is the judge he's the one that avenges he will repay you don't have to fight your battles Put it in the hands of God he will judge he will take care of all of your hurt anybody that hurts you he will take care of them leave it to him and the judgment on the people that hurt God's chosen people the judgment on the Amalekites the, the Am Amalekites Amalekites or the Amalekites that their judgment was that God this would destroy them so God told Saul he said that you're going to destroy all of them because they were the one that troubled you troubled the Israelites they troubled the Israelites so God said you're going to destroy every single one of them even the baby on the breast in the day back then he said you're going to destroy them because they troubled my people and he told Saul the appointed king at the time over Israel said that you're going to destroy them destroy them i'm going to share with you how obedience what 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 how how important obedience is and he said that you're going to destroy them and saul went and he did destroy so you know what saul did saul spared saul spared king Ag agag agag yeah he spared the king of the amalekites he brought back the king of the Amalekites and he also brought back all of their their um all of their their their, their fat ox and lambs sheep whatever whatever um livestock they had he brought them back because he was like we can use these livestock stocks to offer up to the God of Israel God was furious God was furious. I'm talking about back then. God was furious. Do you think do you think it was because he didn't do what he was supposed to do? You know why why God was furious? God wasn't furious because he brought by the king. He wasn't furious because he brought by the ox. God was furious because he didn't listen to him. He didn't obey him. And you know what happened to Saul? When God spoke to Samuel and sent him to Saul and said to Saul, Saul, did you do the will of God? He said, yes, of course I did the will of God. I did the will of our, the God of Israel. I killed every single one of them, but I spared Agag and I brought back the ox and the fat calves so we can offer it to the God of Israel. And when Samuel heard it, Samuel Samuel was furious he was like who do you think this God is do you think that my God is a God of sacrifices do you think that he's a God that depends on the blood of animals do you think that he's a God that is that is fed or do you think that he gets stronger by offering up sacrifices to him I am not a God of sacrifice you, I'm not I, I he's like I, I don't care about your sacrifices and he said you disobeyed me and your sin is worse than witchcraft you disobeyed me what do you think that I must God, a sacrifice God you think that God is a blood God a sacrifice God we only need to sacrifice things because of our sins and he wants us to obey him. Hmm? You think he's just about sacrifice, sacrificing and sacrificing. He wants us to obey, to obey him. And he said, obedience is better than sacrifice. 
And he said, because you spared King A, the, the, Amalek, the king of the Amalekites, you spared their flocks. I told you to kill everybody. Because that's how I will avenge my people. He said, kill everybody. But Saul didn't listen, thought, thought it was just about sacrificing things and sacrifice and doing all of this to please God. Sacrificing things to please him. It's not about sacrifices. It's about obedience. That's the most important thing. And because of that, God said, he regret the day that he made King Saul king over Israel. He regretted the day that he made King Saul king over Israel because he thought it was about sacrifices. It's not about sacrifices. It's not about sacrificing or trying to follow laws and to follow rules. It's not about sacrifices. It's about being obedient. When he speaks to you, you listen. And that's what he said. It's not about the sacrifice that you do. It's not about the things that you do. And this is the, right, the reason why he said, you can do a lot of things in my name. You can heal the sick. You can give to the poor. You can take all of your money and give it to the poor. But if you don't have love, if you don't have a heart of obedience, then you will, you will be cast away. And guys, when I read that, when I heard that, Saul lost, Saul lost the kingdom. Saul took, uh, God put the kingdom away from Saul because of his disobedience. And you know what? Samuel, because of that, he lost, um, Saul lost the kingdom and Samuel had to be the one to destroy, um, to destroy the king of the Amalekites. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing the word, but Amalekites, Amalekites, Amalekites. He was the one that had to destroy the king because Saul didn't do the job. He didn't do what he was supposed to do. He did half, half of the work because obedience was not there. You know what I'm saying? And when I read that, I was like, oh my gosh. And I'm like thinking that, oh, Jody. Yes, guys, so I was just saying, I, when I realized when I read that situation in the same the same time you know remember I was supposed to wake up four o'clock and instead I felt like well I didn't obey I didn't wake up four o'clock I didn't obey God when he spoke to me at the time I prayed at 7 30 all of that was disobedience but I'm like you know what I'm still going to pray because it is better if I pray than to not pray and God literally showed me that word and he just tried, when he explained everything to me in that moment, that was like 30 minutes, God ex just showed me everything. And I was like, oh my gosh. My thing is, so God was like trying to prepare me to, he was like trying to, 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 to prepare me. He, uh, what should I say now? God is literally trying to, to change my attitude. Yeah, he doesn't want me to only do the things that are of him. He doesn't want me to only do the things that are of him. He wants me to listen to him. Not only to do what I need to do as a, as a child of God. He wants me to obey him. And he wants me to become mat like mature to the point that I can literally sit and obey him. I can hear his voice and I can obey him okay and this does not come by through the flesh I, you can't obey god through the flesh you can't do anything that is going to please god through the flesh nothing at all we can do through the flesh to please god because the flesh is literally enmity against god and if we try to obey obey god with our flesh it's going to be a hard task for us we're going to struggle you know what i'm saying so we have to literally live in the spirit of God. We have to be transformed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay? So that we can listen to God. That's how his spirit will come and to, 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 to transform us basically. To regenerate us. And I was just there. And I, he, when he just, ex, you know, just brought everything to me. I was like, Jody, it's not all about praying getting up and praying at four o'clock or getting up and if you don't pray at four o'clock you get up at seven o'clock because you didn't pray at four o'clock and just do things just to do them don't just do things to do them because you want to please god 
You know what I'm saying? So God literally spoke to me. He's like, don't just do things to do it because you know that you're supposed to do it. Do it from a willing heart. Do it out of obedience. Do it because of the love. And if you love God, you will obey. <laughs> he said that if you love me, serve me. How you serve God? By obeying. Yes, if you love me, he said, feed my sheep. When you say we well, love God, love does not only come by the word, word of mouth. Love God in action. Listen to his voice. Do his will. Whatever he commanded us to do, we do it. And that is how we are going to actually please God. And God just spoke to me. He's like, Jody, obedience is better than sacrifice. So you come and you want to pray, you pray at this o'clock, this five o'clock. Or if you didn't get pray, if you didn't listen to God at five o'clock, you want to listen to him at seven o'clock. You want to listen to him and you want to take that same attitude, just continue with that same attitude. You know, continue in sin that grace may abound. God forbid. Should we continue in sin that grace may abound? It means that continue in sin means to continue in my disobedience because I know that Jesus Christ is there and he brought grace he brought salvation to me and this is not the time i'm not under the covenant of i'm not under the same covenant that the, um that moses or the people of israel were under where if they disobeyed god they were condemned i'm not under that covenant but at the same time should i continue in sin that grace may abound god forbid that's what he said to me I shouldn't continue in my disobedience because I know that Jesus Christ is going to forgive me. Yeah, you know I'm saying. So when He spoke to me, it really registered in my head. I'm like, oh my gosh, Jody, it's not all about trying to do things to please God. God wants me to listen to Him because at four o'clock, principalities and the powers, the rulers of darkness, they are working. They are up, ready, organized working and they start the mission for the day the mission is to deceive this girl the mission is to deceive him the mission is to cause chaos and they start and they launch out in every single region of this world strategically ready to to take on to do their job and they're very organized and god wants to wake me up at four o'clock to meet him not even just four o'clock anytime he wakes me up he wakes me up to meet him. And then I disobey. Mm -hmm. I disobey. But he's a forgiving God, so he will forgive me. So whatever he would have given me, whatever, whatever he would have allowed me to get at 4 o'clock, I won't get it. But I am still not condemned because I, I have been forgiven given of my sin because Jesus Christ because of Jesus Christ I have been forgiven but at the same time should I continue in sin that grace may abound God forbid and literally God is teaching me how to obey him and how important it, it is to obey him to listen to his voice how, we, how are we going to obey him? By listening to his voice. Listen to that small, that quiet voice in the back of your head. That you hear it and it, it, it's very stern, very strong, not too loud, but it's just... But you're not hearing it because all you hear is, no, no, no. Well, let's do this because da, 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 and lots of reasoning. But you still ignore that voice. And that is... God is just showing me a lot of things and he just showed me that and I realized oh my gosh it is very important to obey God even if we are not condemned by the law like the people back then who were under the, a different covenant and we are not condemned and I shouldn't feel condemned if I don't pray at a certain time I shouldn't feel that way but if, you do, if I do something one time, two times, three times, and I realize that I am continuing in the same thing, and then I 
the, the thing that I go back to or the cushion that I rest my head on is that God does not condemn me. So even if I sin this morning, he doesn't condemn me. But God does not want me to live my life that way. He doesn't want me to continue in sin because I know that grace is going to be there for me. His forgiving power is there for me. He wants me to be obedient. He wants, he wants that to be a part of me. He wants me to listen to him so that I can be rewarded. You know what I'm saying? And obedience is very important. Obedience, remember, obedience is better than sacrifice. And, sac and, 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 and disobedience is like the sin of witchcraft. Very wicked. You know what I'm saying? Abraham, look at Abraham, what happened to him. His obedience caused the people of Israel. His obedience caused everybody, every single one of his tribe, they were blessed. And this is the reason why God says righteousness, obedience, exalted a nation. Oh God. But sin is a reproach. Disobedience is a reproach unto every man. Disobedience is like the sin of witchcraft. And though we have, though we have God's grace and God is not going to destroy us the way that he destroyed the people many years ago who were under a different covenant, he's not going to destroy us like them because Jesus is there. To redeem us he's our salvation but should we continue in sin should we continue in disobedience because we know that god's grace is going to say this is how god really he's is working on me and he's trying to make me understand that it's important to obey him and in my efforts to obey him and if i if i mess up he doesn't want me to continue in sin because I know that his grace is there. His grace is sufficient to keep me. He doesn't want me to continue in sin. He still wants me to obey him. He wants me to get into the attitude of obedience. So he wants to make me more mature. You know? And I was listening to this. So I realized that in this season, God is teaching me how to become obedient. And I'm not, I'm not perfect yet, but I am in the learning process. You know what I'm saying? And I just wanted to share with you because I believe that this is what God has called me to do in this season. Yeah, is to share everything about him. Whenever I get it, share it. And this is my testimony. And that is how I will overcome the enemy by the word of my testimony. Like I'm not in a, like a church with a lot of people, but I am on this platform, YouTube, and a lot of people are watching mm-hmm they're watching some of them might come and look two minutes three minutes conviction can be there you know what i'm saying so i am here to just share with you about obedience and i know that this might be all over the place but i know that you can understand i know that you can understand i believe that you can understand and i believe that god is going to convict each and each and every person god is a forgiving god when you sin Yes, he forgives you. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't want you to feel condemned because he didn't feel come into this world that you might feel condemned because you disobeyed him. And every day you disobey him. I disobey him. I disobedient. Mm -mm. Don't feel condemned because he didn't come into the world, this, this world, to condemn anybody. Mm -hmm. He didn't come to condemn anybody. So I. My disobedience is like witchcraft. So, so a lot of people think that, oh, she's a fornicator. This is an adulterer. She's a prostitute. Oh, he's gay. And the Bible doesn't allow it. He's gay. She's gay. And their sin is bigger than mine. And no, mm -mm. all of you, all of us, we have sinned and fallen short of the grace of God. And we need to repent. Me, my sin, my sin of disobedience is just is as wicked as witchcraft as wicked and evil as witchcraft mm -hmm. disobedience is as wicked as witchcraft so we might feel that oh i am more righteous i'm not more righteous than anybody i'm not more righteous than anybody i'm as wicked as the, the prostitute that sells her body to every man 
Mm -hmm. And then sometimes that same prostitute can get a disease. I am as wicked as her. I am as full of disease when I when I when I disobey God as her. And that is how disobedience is. So I'm just encouraging everybody. Don't feel condemned because you sinned. Do not feel condemned because God didn't, Jesus Christ didn't come so that we might feel condemned. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. But it doesn't mean that we should continue in sin so that his grace may abound. We shouldn't continue in sin. You understand me? We must be obedient to God because when he, when he returns, he's going to judge our hearts. It's not going to judge the things that you did and the sacrifices that you made for him. He's going to judge your heart. He's going to figure out if you were obe truly obedient to his words. So this is just my way of encouraging you. Don't feel condemned. I, I, two weeks ago or a couple days ago, I felt condemned. But God said, don't feel condemned, Jody. But at the same time, don't continue in your sin. Because you know that my grace may abound. Your, your my grace is sufficient for you don't continue in your sin get into an attitude of obedience and listen and then he showed me he showed me everything is like all of this experience is just to show you so that you can become mature and it's just the same everything the experience moses the mosaic covenant and everything the laws everything was to teach mankind who god is and to also teach us or nature yes and this is my word in jesus name i pray i hope the words that are here it will you know it won't fall on rocky stony hearts but it will fall the, the seed that i am sowing it will fall on good soil and the soil and the seed will grow and turn into a beautiful tree and so forth and you might produce fruits all right so this is my word. I pray that, as I said before, many are called, but few are chosen. Not a lot of people will receive this and so forth, but it's fine. It's fine. It's the beginning. God convicts. I do not save. God saves. Okay? So, bless you, everybody. Know that. Me, I am learning to know. To, I'm learning to love God. I'm learning to obey God. I disobey and my sin is as wicked as your sin okay but I am here with whatever experience I have to encourage you that you can do it too yes but anyway but God is God is a good God but I hope that this video was helpful and it bless your heart and just bless everybody right now in Jesus name I pray amen this is it for my video hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe see you in the next one